Today, uh, I'm here to talk about Amazon Pinpoint. In the keynote today, you heard Werner's uh, address. He talked about transformation. He talked about using data, using analytics, and understanding your users to engage them so that you can build great apps, build great mobile apps. And that's what me, I'm Georgie Matthews. I'm the senior product manager with AWS Mobile. And Raj from Ajero, he's a senior director, I want to talk about how we've thought about and built Amazon Pinpoint as a service product for, to enable you to engage your users so that you can <laughs> increase your overall user engagement, you can increase retention, and effectively manage them. So what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about from as we've been building this product, we've gone through customers, talking to them about getting their feedback, what should we be building, et cetera. So we're going to talk about what we've heard from them and talk about what are the concerns and what are the pain points in mobile engagement as it stands today. We're going to introduce Pinpoint. We're going to talk about how we think of, have thought about Pinpoint, how we, how we have thought about the product, what are the features, et cetera. Then Raj from Majero is going to talk through the customer use case that, and how we have worked together and how they have built the app on Pinpoint. Uh, we're going to talk about why should you, as developers and marketers, use Pinpoint? What, how should you think about uh, how we are solving for the pain points we have heard about? And then Graham and I are going to go through a demo and leave time for questions that you might have about the product. Cool. So what we have heard from customers, as we've gone through building this product, talking to our, the customer base that we, we have from mobile developers, what we have heard is that mobile user engagement is a complex puzzle with, many, puzzle with many pieces. But there are a lot of missing blanks. There are a lot of missing uh, blanks and there are pain points. What are those pain points? If I would say number one is scale. Customers have uh, talked about, uh, given us feedback that there are two use cases that they have talk, thought through. They can either build in-house mobile engagement solutions or they can go to third-party solutions. One thing that is common is that engagement is always an afterthought. It's like you build a great app, you build a use case, but then you have to go through the heavy lifting of engaging your users, retaining us users, and increasing their retention on your app. And some of the data points that we have uh, done as part of our research is you, getting your users back to your mobile app is one of the hardest things. The moment you launch an app, you get 25% of the users using the app for the on the first day and they're never coming back. And you spend nearly, customers spend around $10 to three, like upwards of $10 in actually get acquiring those users. So why not actually build platforms to engage them more efficiently? The reason scale is also important is as you go through your growth phase and you go through your app life cycles, Customers have also said that it's very difficult for them to have engagement solutions that scale with their growth. They have reliability issues, which is the other pain point. They have huge reliability issues with those apps. They're building the apps, and suddenly they, they, they hit a good growth spurt, and they see the reliability falling and degrading in the apps and not perf the performance suffering. Next up is flexibility. Most of the in-house or bundle, third-party bundled solutions are bundled. You don't have the flexibility to use which features best suit your use case based on your app lifecycle. So for the first part of your app, do you want to focus on analytics? Do you want to focus on understanding the users? For the second part, do you want to be able to create campaign management solutions, et cetera? And for the second uh, following on, do you want to have a much more richer marketing team looking at building engagement, A-B testing campaigns, and managing your user experience like that? So there is that app lifecycle. So most products do not allow you the flexibility to pick and choose what features to use when. The last piece, which is definitely something that has been resonated across the board, is the fact that mobile engagement solutions are not, there is an op opportunity, they, are, they cost a lot, and they, that is a concern for a lot of the users, that that is a perennial pain point. Introducing Amazon Pinpoint, how we have thought about this is, for Pinpoint, we have thought about three primary dimensions of breaking this product solution. Uh, a lot of this uh, inputs or insights is from the products we already have. So if you think about, we have, a, we have the experience of having operated SNS Mobile Push, Amazon Mobile Analytics for the last few years, and have a lot of customer feedback on how they are thinking about engaging with these products. So with Pinpoint, the way we thought, thought about this is, 
Pinpart has three dimensions to it. Measuring the engagement of users, to understand your users, to learn about the user. Defining target audiences, defining segments about their user. Understanding who to target, when to target, why to target. That is driven by your analytics. And then create, being able to create customized and personalized messages. But that pieces of uh, interesting feedback has been, how do I create one message per user? How do I create a differentiated message for a group or cohort of users? And those are the use cases that can be solved by Pinpoint. And how does this picture come together? These are three dimensions. How do these pictures come together? So the way we think about this is, this is the virtuous cycle that we think about, is you start by learning your app behavior, start about by learning your, about your users. You define which audience and who to target and segment. Then you message and draft the right message, draft the right engagement campaigns. And then you measure the improvement on it. You measure the effectiveness of those and improve it. And this is a repeated cycle. So you do this again. You then have a second cycle of what's your app behavior today. And then define a much more refined segmentation and targeting engine. And then uh, re-engage them. And this is a repeated cycle that can be, from a marketing standpoint, can be done again and again. The other point that is interesting is, one of the feedback is segmentation is also inherently difficult. We've heard customers that managing data for mobile app behavior and bringing them intelligently into segmentation has been extremely uh, one of the biggest pain points. For example, uh, I was talking to a customer. The customer's feedback was this. Uh, hey, we have this app. We have this database about in-store data but foot traffic, and we have mobile app usage data. To, for us to be able to create an engagement campaign for all customers who came into the store and have an app, the segmentation logic takes more than a week for my marketing team to identify that segment, bring in that data, and define that segmentation data. We believe that is a fundamental pain point that is, that is causing a lot of churn in terms of increasing time to market for these campaigns and thus impacting your engagement efforts. And we are solving for that by allowing you to bring in data from third-party external sources and by being able to not just use app data but also indirect external data. What are those capabilities? What are the other capabilities we allow? We currently allow you to create targeted campaign push notifications and messages. We allow you to schedule and run those uh, recurring campaigns. So you can do a once. You can also do a fire and forget campaign management tool. The user engagement, measuring that engagement is powered by both rich campaign analytics and app analytics. But you also have further down the stream analytics like funnel and funnel analytics, segment analytics, and also be analytics driven by A-B testing and holdout testing. So you can measure con impact of conversion. You can measure impact of lift via pinpoint. You have certain messaging uh, control uh, features like quiet time, message caps. And you also have a certain rich messaging features like being able to send out images through your notifications. So think about if you were a retail, web, retail app developer wanting to send out, hey, there's a great deal on this product. That, that message and that push notification becomes extremely powerful if you could actually send the image of the product with that. Or if you, even if you were a game developer, focus on a social game, and wanted to send out, hey, uh, there's all, here, are, here is your current status of all your friends. You could send that as a text notification. You could send that as a rich media image notification. The last notifi uh, use case in the, is the in-app and data notifications. And this is a very developer-centric use case where you want to change app config based on sending, being able to send silent notifications to change app behavior, which is notifications received in the background by your uh, customers. Uh, true to AWS, we also allow you to actually plug into other systems to get the raw data out. So for you to be, so Dartboard does offer you a lot of the, lot of the custom dashboards and dashboards that are build pre-built pre dashboards, but it also allows you to do custom analytics. Get the data, get your raw data to S3, export it, and be able to do custom analytics on it. That leads us to, the as with all products at AWS, one of the customer personas that we have focused on is the developer. And what have we done differently here is, We've enabled, thought about Dartboard as in being able to enable targeting automation, 
why are a full API, like API and CLI support that's at parity on all the features that we've talked about? We've, able, we've allowed you to personalize your apps using custom attributes, custom events. And we've allowed you rich uh, features like data notifications to control that app behavior. So all of these from has been some of the like, when we've been talking to developers as to what do you want from a messaging channel, these, these all, have, all of these have been primary feedback elements. Think, and think about how they would use it, right? Like, uh, like the API support is really interesting when you start in, in integrating with third party data sources. You want to do all this via APIs. It's also interesting if you want to build your own uh, dashboards to get all the data and build your own dashboards on top of, top of that board. The other persona that we're adding here with Pinpoint is the marketer. For us, this is the first time as a service we are going after the marketing or marketer as a customer. And for us, this is where we are learning and this is our, our opportunity to partner with you, you and your, your marketers on your team and learn. And how are we going about this? We have clearly identified that a rich console experience, the customer experience is absolutely a mandatory to, for us to engage with a marketer, for us to have a repeat engagement on the console with the marketer. So we enable you to create or have all the functionality on the console. So you can create your risk notifications using the console. You can create your marketing campaigns using console. You can schedule, define schedules using the console. You also have all the uh, rich marketing features like rich media notifications, A-B testing, you have holdout testing, and last is segmentation. So the way we have thought about segmentation is, again, focusing on the user experience. We have given you a, a expression builder. Developers have instrumented an app, define custom attributes for your use case. Now your marketers have an expression builder where they can actually run and define what the audience should target. And at every run instance of a campaign, we compute that segment. What is the current size of that segment? So that's all done behind the scenes. And this comes back to the point of how do you enable dynamic segmentation? How do you take away that 10 week timeline or a week's timeline to actually identify the right audiences to target and reach out to? So the key takeaway here is for, our, for Pinpoint, we offer, we believe, we, fund, we <coughs> absolutely believe that we offer a great value proposition for developers and marketers both. But we also believe that this is day one for us. We want to learn to continue to, and continue to grow, and we are absolutely certain to iterate on this and build this with a much faster clip going forward. And on that note, as to explain more on how we have learned through this product evolution, I want to bring in Raj uh, Behara. He's a, he's a, a launch customer from uh, Ajero, and he's going to talk about how the Ajero team has used Pinpoint in enabling engagement for their app. Raj, over to you. Thank you, Georgie. I'm Raj Bahara, Senior Director for Digital Products and Platforms at Ajero. Ajero is a leading provider of roadside services and accident scene management services. We serve... Oh, you didn't know. We serve um, around 80 million drivers, and we do around 11 million or over 11 million, million events a year. Uh, we serve 75% of the top automotive manufacturers, as well as 70% of the insurance companies uh, in North America. We count uh, Progressive, USA, Toyota, Volkswagen, Audi, as Many, and many others are our clients. So we are a white label company, so <laughs> you have to know that. Um, today we are gonna to talk about accident scene management. One of the big pieces about accident scene management is from the time an accident happens on the side of the road to the time the emergency response teams actually get notified about an accident. In a rural area, it takes up to seven minutes for the response teams to be notified about an accident. And in urban areas, it takes up to three minutes. The problem with that is, if you decrease the time to be able to respond to an accident to 30 seconds, NHTSA says that we could save up to 3,000 lives every year in the <coughs> United States alone. So we have been working for a while, over two decades, of bringing safety services to the market and we worked with large automotive manufacturers in bringing telematics into vehicles. 
the past few years, we have been extremely successful with that. And in the past couple of years, what we have done is, how about getting this technology into the mobile phones, using the sensors in the smartphones to detect an accident. So we could probably even bring that 30 seconds down to a lot less. And uh, with systems like AWS, like you have seen with uh, Werner today, we could bring it down quite a bit. So uh, what is this about being able to detect an accident using the sensors in a smartphone? We have to be able to crunch a large amount of high-frequency sensor data. Then we have to classify what those events that we can extract from that sensor data. Classif classifying a high-G event is probably a very straightforward and automate, automated, uh, learning, uh, automated problem. However, if you want to distinguish between um, a high-G event to something that is flying off of uh, your phone, flying off of the um, cup holder in the car. It, there is very subtle variations that could change how your detection uh, accuracies would get affected. So what we have done is we done a number of um, uh, various crash tests by we bought cars, strapped the cars with uh, multiple cell phones, and we put crash test dummies within them, and then we crashed the cars on, uh, on normal um, crash test sites and as well as uh, sleds. We took a lot of that data, we created algorithms using machine learning techniques, and we are at a high degree of accuracy, we are able to detect accidents. But to bring the human complexity into this detection process, we need a lot of consumer driving behavior data. So we know when somebody is actually using the phone and putting that in a handbag, and they're in a crash, that, that signature of an event is completely different to a signature event your car, uh, your, your vehicle is in, uh, your phone is in the uh, glove box. So we have to be able to detect those subtle differences on how human, behave, hu human behavior uh, approaches it. So today I'm very excited to introduce to you MyLab. This is our solution on how we are going to crowdsource driving behavior data. The app is free. Better yet, we are going to be paying you to use it. You will earn points for every mile you drive. And when you accrue enough points, you can redeem those points for a gift card. And in that unfortunate accident, when you, you are in an accident and you want to, if, if you submit us a very simple crash report, we give you $250. Isn't that nice? <laughs> So we built MyLab, the application itself, to run completely in the background. Once you set it up, you can shut it, or you can forget about it. However, we want to engage with our users, and that is completely possible with Pinpoint. So we work very closely with the Pinpoint team to say how, what kind of engagement features we can build into MyLab so we can understand the kinds of users that are interested in our solution. So we take some of the features out of Pinpoint, like weekly active users and we launch weekly challenges for them so we can con keep them continue to come, 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 back, come back to the app. And then we take those infrequent users who don't come to the app often and surprise them with bonus points for certain actions that they have done without realizing that, so they can come back into the app. And next up, if they have accrued enough points and they haven't come back into the app to redeem those points, then we use pinpoints of campaigns to bring them back into the app so they can redeem the points and see the value of the app. For us to be able to do all these kinds of engagement features, we have to understand what kind of users they are. So we start with segments in Pinpoint. We, we take the, act, the normal, uh, the basic segments that Pinpoint provides, which is around active users. Any marketers in the, in the audience, you would find that that is you're familiar with that, and you can use active users to target uh, different kinds of campaigns. But if you want a little more granular control on what those kinds of active users, what actions they're doing, we use custom attributes to track those active users for, that are doing certain actions. Next, we use, for the developers in the audience, I think you will probably like this, because we use data that we are collecting completely outside of pinpoints 
and we create different static segments for people who joined the challenge or completed the challenge and many others. Once you create segments, you want to be able to launch uh, campaigns. In, using Pinpoint, you can launch various campaigns. One we do, which most of you are familiar with, are lifecycle campaigns. And then when we launch challenges, we want to use targeted campaigns to the people that are taking part in the challenge. And then some, when people have enough points and they have, and they have uh, enough points to redeem for a gift card, we launch challenges so we get people to redeem their gift card so they see the value in the application and the solution. And then we use social kinds of social campaigns to, for, uh, to ask users to talk about the app and spread the word so everyone can earn points while driving around. If you see all these campaigns, one of the things that is very critical about a campaign is about message, the messaging inside the campaign. Any message needs to be scheduled and sent at the right time so the users would be able to interact with that message. So Pinpoint gives us, the, us that capability. And one of the things that our marketing team really loves is putting in a really effective call to action in the message. And how do we measure this, that it is actually effective? And that is where we start with some analytics. We do multiple types of targeting, uh, message, uh, targeted messaging within a segment using A-B testing. In this case, you would see that the message on the left is, is the one that is winning. And Pinpoint's analytics really provides us that data in real time. So we can tweak our messaging, and we can change and increase our uh, click rates. How did we do all of this? We, we spent a very tiny amount of time integrating Pinpoint into our application. So I'll, go you, I'll walk you through on how we did this. We have our mobile application. We have integrated the uh, Pinpoint SDK that sends data into Pinpoint analytics which gets streamed into Pinpoint. Our marketing team uses the Pinpoint's um, admin console to create lifecycle messaging. And our application also talks to our backend to up update the backend with the driving behavior data or whenever you're driving miles and things like that. We calculate the eligible miles, so we are, not actually, we are also looking for airplane miles and those kinds of things. So we are looking at driving miles. And we feed that back, and we create, we have some game mechanics that give, give you points. And for challenges that you have, uh, you have won or taken part, and you will get some points. Those points, the user's points, are accessible through a marketing portal that we created. And we launch all our challenges and surprise um, campaigns and rewards campaigns and rewards redemption through that portal. That portal accesses Pinpoint through Pinpoint's APIs, and we use Lambda for compute, and API gateway for access. All messaging that we set up through Pinpoint is then delivered through Pinpoint messaging back to the application. Very simple, very straightforward. All of this would not have been possible for MyLab without Pinpoint. So MyLab is available today for preview, and it will be available to everyone with a few, few other features in January. It's available in Google Play Store today, and it's coming soon in, on Apple's iOS devices. One of the things I would really encourage you to, to download the app, use the app, come and join the MyLab community, because our mission is to save lives the 3,000 lives that we are looking at, and be a part of it. And we welcome all your feedback so we can make it better before the general available in January. OK? Thank you. And next, Sharji. Uh, so Raj, uh, I'm going to do something impromptu. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys, by the way, if they download the app, are you guys having someone actually set up campaigns right now to welcome them to Pinpoint? <laughs> I think that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and also, how long did you guys take? Because I, we started talking with uh, Raj and team uh, maybe uh, September or so? Yeah. 
Like, so, yeah, it's been this, uh, the journey is like the product has been in development, but what I want to highlight is we've tried making it as easy as possible for you to quickly trade and develop with this app. So we started talking in September, and it's November, end of November, and the product is already live. And this is in parallel with the development phase. So the entire product was built in these last three months. Yeah. And it's not just the engagement piece that they were. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what I want to go next is, why should you, as a developer or a marketer, why should you use Pinpoint? And how do we think we are solving for the pain points here? I think, first and foremost, uh, scale and reliability. We believe with Pinpoint, we are definitely solving for both those use cases. Why, why, why are we confident about the reliability piece? Number one, with AWS Mobile and AWS in general, in the mobile space for both messaging and for analytics, today with the services we have, we, 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 uh, we ingest more than a billion plus events a day on a daily basis. We ingest actually uh, multiple billions of billion events. We, we send out billions plus, billion plus events in a day. So we are absolutely confident we can deliver what you're promising when we are saying we can send out a million messages in under a minute. Think about this, right? If you were a deals website, if you were a, a flash sales website, and you want to send out a million messages saying, hey, there's a sale starting right now, and you want to come see that traffic coming, ha happening today, you can use this. If you were an emergency or a disaster management website, you want to send out a, hey, there's a disaster coming, and you want, you, the criticality of the message reaching them right now is really important to you, that this uh, pinpoint can guarantee that. Pinpoint allows you flexible, uh, from a reliability standpoint, it also allows you to customize your app. So think about having custom events, the power of uh, custom events to customize the app to your use case. Custom attributes to customize your user personas to your use case. So you could be a, you could be a sports app and you could say, what are your favorite teams? You could be a content distribution app and you could say, what are your favorite topics? And that is unique to a user and you can customize that using Pinpoint. And that's what we call custom attributes. And Pinpoint allows you to use third-party data sources. So you can actually bring in data from S3, and we are confident that for every campaign you run, those million endpoints can be imported within four minutes. So that scale is incredibly, what uh, I think is incredibly valuable with Pinpoint. Next up. So no more worrying about reliability and scale as you grow. Next, I think is, we believe the one thing I highlighted was flexibility. Like the, one of the feedback from customers has been lack of flexibility and lack of how Pinpoint grows with their use cases. And the way we broke down this problem was we said, all right, when we are building a pricing structure, how would we think about this? And we thought about what are the customers using this for? What is their real use cases and how are they thinking about using it? And we said, their use cases are, they have outbound messaging use cases, they have inbound analytics use cases, and they have segmentation targeting use cases. And the way we are thinking about our pricing is, you pay for your outbound messages at a dollar per million me messages, pay for your inbound mess events at a dollar per million events, and you pay for the segmentation and targeting. That's a complicated number, so I would say $1.2 per thousand monthly targeted audience. The targeting fee is unique. So irrespective of you say, send a million, uh, thousand messages to a user, you still get charged for the targeting that one user. So that's totally based on like how many users you're targeting. And it's also flexible to your use cases. So as you're growing, you're building an app, you want to first just see what is your analytics. You will be just charged for the analytics on, the on enabling app analytics. Now, if you start saying you want to send targeting for month one and see how, and just play around with what is the impact of messaging them, you'll be charged for that in month one. And month two, you can say, I don't want to use messaging at that point. So it's flexible in that way. Last, we also allow a great free tier. So we are allowing, a, with the pinpoint free tier, you're getting a million messages outbound, you're getting 100 million events inbound, and you're getting 5,000 MTA as a free tier. So for all you like uh, net new app developers, I think, and who want to think about engagement, building engagement from day one, this is a great uh, pinpoint is a great solution to experiment with and incorporate in your app. Uh, last one, I think. Uh, so overall, the key point takeaway here is the flexibility and the transparent nature. We want to price you on what you're using the service for. Next up is a pinpoint demo. And for the demo, like, uh, we thought about this. We, through this presentation, I've talked to, you, talked to you about the two personas we have. We have the developer persona. We have the marketer persona. And for the marketer persona, we have, we have an app. We, 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 we've built an app already. We'll walk you through that. For the developer persona, the easiest thing was, hey, if today, actually tonight, you guys want to go back and see how do you integrate with pinpoint. And 
how do you do it? So then Graham and I said, like, why don't we walk you through that, right? So Graham, go ahead. Great, thanks. So um, <clears throat> quite loud, but uh, my name is Graham Cuthbertson, and I am an engineer uh, on the Pinpoint team. Um, so yeah, we talked about the, the different perspectives or personas with the, uh, with the offering. Um, I'd like to walk through, really just kind of focus on how would a developer get started inside of Pinpoint. We wanted to make the barrier to entry really low, really easy. So um, if you're not familiar with Mobile Hub, uh, we leverage that as a service. It helps you get quick start um, uh, bootstrap with things like Cloud API, chatbot samples, and also our Pinpoint demo. Um, so from the marketing uh, pages is where I'm at right now. Um, by clicking on the Getting Started link, this will take you into the actual Pinpoint landing page console, where you'll see a list of all of your apps. So as a developer, I'm going to go into the Mobile Hub console. I'm going to give this a name, Pinpoint Launch Demo. Why does this always happen? So um, what we're doing right now is um, we're enabling, uh, you can enable lots of different uh, of, the, of the offerings uh, from Mobile Hub uh, and get a sample app that showcases lots of different things. But we're gonna focus on just Pinpoint for now, which uh, we also dub engagement. Um, we offer support for both Android and iOS. Um, and I'm going to set this up for Android credentials. And what we're doing here is we're generating an actual um, you know, sample application that builds a, an example with you and, and gives you our pinpoint SDK. Um, so one of the things that we did with the, the SDKs was we broke out standalone SDKs. And these SDKs are all about um, helping you um, seamlessly get started with registering all of the apps uh, collecting data, uh, known data about the device, enabling you to add some custom data of your, your own, but also deal with the push notifications that are coming in and be able to record custom events for deeper in, uh, engagement in, in analytics tracking. The integration steps here that you'll, you can walk through um, if you'd like to. By downloading the sample app, all you really need to do to get started with this inside of Android, for example, um, is click the button and unzip it. So I've done that. I'll skip ahead over to having this loaded up inside of Android Studio, where I've got an emulator, um, had an emulator running. But I'll pop that up and run it again. So Mobile Hub uh, has created this, uh, this project on the left-hand side that's done all the heavy lifting for you. It's, it's uh, you know, we, we created the project, we supplied our credentials, so it's generated the, the app that we need to do. The developer doesn't need to really touch anything. Um, and I'll demonstrate that now by simply just clicking debug. I haven't, I haven't touched any code in the sample app whatsoever. Oh, sorry. So the sample app, um, if you do enable lots of other different cards, like, like the chatbot sample, for example, you'll see those listed inside of here. We're focused on the user engagement uh, for the Amazon Pinpoint uh, um, demo, and demoing uh, the actual user engagement. Clicking into this card, what I see is um, the top section, which is the information that we looked at this emulated device itself. So we pull off the easy stuff, right? Like the platform, the make, the model, the version, things that we can just know automatically. And we also show a sample down here about the custom attributes that uh, Georgie was talking about. So some ideas of custom attributes might be that you create a new subscription, like a feed app, right? Um, and you want to, or different users are interested in, I don't know, sports and technology and things like that. That would be a good example of, of uh, custom attributes, which are then used later on to be able to target demographics and build segments. Um, so I'll just you know, turn on winter and summer. Coming back into um, well, I, before I go uh, all the way back, I did want to also mention that um, the, in addition to the SDK, the mobile SDKs that come down, we also have a full-fledged API SDK. So being able to do things like manage these segments and manage campaigns, to be able to migrate your existing uh, users and, 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 um, and endpoints into the system is all available through all the you know, modern programming languages, Java, Go, Python, .NET, CL, or ABS, CLI, PowerShell, so on and so forth. 
So on the left-hand side of the, uh, of the Mobile Hub um, website is the Engage icon. This will link us back into the Pinpoint console. It'll drop me directly into um, this new app that I just created. And while I can go through and kind of show you, you know, analytics about like kind of nothing that's really in here, I'm actually gonna flip it over right now back to Georgie to discuss the, uh, the marketing persona in Flow. Graham, um, one yeah. question before we go. Uh, if you're on the Mobile Hub page and you had an existing app, how would you work on that? Like, to, it's not just a sample app. You do get the integration steps for your existing app too, right? Yes, absolutely. Got it, got it. So now let's talk about uh, what Pinpoint can do. So we talked about data, right, uh, having this data available. With Pinpoint, you can bring in uh, your existing data for your app users. So as a marketer, if I was going through this, I would like, who are my users? What are my users doing? So I can say, all right, I have 67,000 users I can target. I have 539 of them who are monthly active. So the reason why that discrepancy is there because we've been loading data up, and this is a test app. So this is all the actual people who are using this, and the rest are actual devices on our repeat using it. So you can quickly understand the discrepancy in an app to understand where to target. You can also see how many of them are new users, and you can also see how many sessions you have on a daily basis. You can also go through your uh, details on your demographics. So the way the custom attributes are broken up, the way you are, uh, so a couple of things, right? Graham mentioned you have a lot of the out-of-the-box demographic attributes, which are your device attributes. So quickly know your platform split, quickly know your app version, models, et cetera. And you can also know your custom attributes. So here uh, in this app, we have set up uh, three custom attributes, your interest, your uh, personas, and your subscription. So are you a free or paid customer? Are you, uh, what's your interest? And what, what persona are you? Are you? Uh, now that I know this, let's, and I know that I have a, this tiny segment of humans who I really want to target because they're the real people. So why don't I just go create a campaign? Before I, so a couple of things, right? One thing is I can define a segment in a campaign itself. I can name a campaign. So let's see. And here you have an option to either define an A-B test or a standard campaign. So if you were going by a, a A-B test, you have a message or a schedule. Do you want to create an A-B test by a message or do you want to create an A-B test by a schedule? For your use case, hey, let's create a, today is the launch day, so let's create a standard campaign. Let's say, uh, let's reach out to all users who have used the app in the last 30 days who are humans who are interested in analytics, because we launched this as an analytics solution, who are, in, who are interested, who are humans. And we see that we have six, month, six active users. So this also allows you, based on your uh, segment definition, you can quickly see how many users are in this segment. So we are doing that computation at runtime and giving you a current snapshot of this. So now, after, after a week, but the good thing is, even after a week, if now, the segment increases to 100, you don't have to recompute it. We'll cal calculate that on your behalf based on the logic that you have defined here. Once you do that, uh, if you go here, you can define your holdout. How much do you want to, let's say, 10% holdout. And then you go to the next step. You get to the notification bar where you can actually define craft your message. So now, you would, in addition to this, in, in, in addition to the title and the message, you can also specify your message action. Do you want the message to open an app? Do you want a message to open the URL, or do you want to deep link it to a, into a certain point in your app? And in, the reason why the, uh, deep linking is important, think about the use case, right? You could uh, have a deal running. You could have an in, interesting article running on your app, a news article. You could have a, be a deal or a news alert running. And you can want to send them directly to that. Or you're a new game, uh, game developer having launched a new feature. You want to push the customers to that particular feature, and that's where deep linking will allow you to seamlessly push them to that, fear, that, that particular feature. You also have advanced settings here, where you can give your iOS uh, media URLs and rich media URLs so that these media URLs will be transported uh, through the app in the notification. 
The other piece that we talked about was a silent notification, where you can actually define a silent notification and just pass a JSON body as part of the message. And this will be handled uh, if you've instrumented, based on how you've instrumented your app, this will be handled on the app at that point. Let's run through this use case. Of this. Uh, so let's call this the action as open app. Now you can quickly go and say, what time do you want to schedule this? Do you want to, uh, do you want to schedule this as a once? OK, so let's schedule it for today. Uh, later today, let's schedule it at, right? and then let's say we want to do it at, sorry, 100 hours. And we can say which, uh, which, uh, which time zone I want to send it to. And the reason, th uh, the time zone is important, right? If you have users who are across different parts of the world, based on the time zone they are selecting, specific standard time, the dartboard will start sending campaigns in specific standard time. And we'll go through the world wherever your users and hit them at that particular local time for the user. And if I want to hit all my users at one time, all I do is I just simply deselect this and I'm done. Uh, all right, so this is now in a place we can set it up. Okay, oh, date, date's missing. So let's do it today and done. Next step, you do a review and launch. Okay. So once you've launched your campaign, you wait for a minute. Th this campaign will now be scheduled at 6 o'clock. So th this is the, how we have fired it. So this campaign now will be fired at 6 o'clock today evening. And if you want to see the campaign details here, you can come here. Here you will be see, uh, because there's no campaign that was run on this app, you'd see that there are no campaign metrics on this. Right now, there are no active campaigns. But we have historically run campaigns before this. So we see some of the historical campaign data that has been running here. Cool. Uh, that's the extent of the demo for today. Uh, I think the next part of the slide here, if you would switch to this. Green. I think next part of the demo was uh, presentation was going into questions. Uh, I think at this point, any questions? Go ahead. Uh, 